Hey, welcome, welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. What I do know, however, is hopefully you are watching me in black and white right now. Because this is as you'll know from the thumbnail, the title, and if you read it in the description, a collaboration with my friend, the beautiful Val, Ms. Mischief, formerly Gimme Lip and More. And we are doing a palette bingo today with the Ace A Beauté Oceanic palette. So, to find out exactly which colours we have to play with, how well or not the palette performed, and what this looks like in glorious Technicolor, then my friend you are in precisely the right place. Grab a drink. Grab a snack, put your feet up, and enjoy, because here he comes. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Okay, you will have seen in the intro and that this is a collaboration with Val, who was Gimme Lip and More, and she's now Ms. Mischief. There's more than one channel called Ms. Mischief, so to be honest, I find her by typing Gimme Lip and More and it still brings her channel up. Sorry Val. <laughs> um, so we decided that um, I'd treated myself to this particular palette, the Ace Beauty Oceanic palette, uh, in this sale over New Year from Beauty Bay. Let me get that to show you. There you go. Um, and Val said, yep, yeah, I have that palette, do you fancy doing a collab with it? And I'm like, hell yeah, why not? Uh, so we decided to do a palette bingo where we were going to send each other the colours we were going to use. And then Val got so excited, <laughs> she used the colours that she'd picked out for me, for her look. Thankfully she told me this before... I'd filmed mine, so I'm going to use the colours that I'd randomly picked out for her. And those colours are, let's fold this back so I'm not dazzling you. Just stab myself in the boob with the corner of that. That's quite sharp. Uh, Blue Clam, Pacific, Lagoon, Anemone, and Algae. Which, when you swatch them out, look like that. Now, obviously those first two shades look a little bit... But blues and greens are some of the most difficult colours to create. So, uh, I'll just see how it looks when I put it on my eye. Lid. Not ball. That would be ridiculous. So I can see, it. I can't work out if that's a shadow I'm seeing up there or if it's a wet patch on the wall. I'll have to have a look in a minute. We've had a couple of uh, dodgy, I say dodgy, nothing in comparison to what Florida and that lot get. Um, but we've had a couple of quite, quite windy and wet weekends. I think it's just a shadow from one of the... Uh, tribal masks that hubby's got up on the wall. Yes, I let him put a tribal mask up in the kitchen. There was actually two. Anyway, uh, this is still a teaching channel that combined with my chronic pain means that I probably don't blend as quickly as most people would like me to. However, the YouTube gods 
gave you a speed widget. Feel free to use it. I won't be offended. I very often have so many films that I think, oh my goodness, I want to watch that, and I want to watch that, and I want to watch that, and I want to watch that. And I think the only way I'm going to get through all of those and do any editing I've got to do and do any filming I've got to do and actually have a life is if I watch them at double speed. <laughs> so trust me, it really doesn't offend me. Um, I am going to insert the very up close and personal clip in just a minute where I talk you through the differences between deep set eyes and hooded lids. Once that's done, uh, I'll be back to start popping some of these colours on. Now, as I said, it's going to be very up close and personal. Don't scream. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Chrome Pebble Primer in Blank Page Cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this, you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes. I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye, you can see I've got as much, if not more, lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush something like this or a pencil brush, sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow, so just use smaller blending brushes 
or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using just sit back relax your brows and make sure you brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Right, I am going in with a Morphe Jeffrey JS12, which is a quite tightly packed. Well, I say tightly packed. It's it's not as blown out as the kind of brush that I would normally start with. It's more the kind of brush that I use through the crease, but because I'm using three quite dark colours because I'm going to concentrate the two blues and the grey up on here uh, so because I'm using quite dark colours I want to control just how far up the eye I take them so they don't become too um, I don't want them to get muddy and, and blend into each other too much uh, I always hold the brush right at the very end so I put as little pressure on as possible and I do circular movements, this direction towards the nose, this direction away. Details of um, different brushes that I recommend. The discount code, including the one for the uh, eye primer and whether my discount codes are affiliated or not, are all listed very, very clearly in my description box. Right, that being said, Let's put some colours on and have a chat about Val. Right, I'm going to start off, I think, with uh, Blue Clam, which just sounds so rude. But I'm going to tap off because, I mean, there's not a major amount of kick up. As you can see but again it's quite deep colors so I'd rather build them up slowly um, than suddenly have them and needing to have to blend it out for a huge great chunk so to speak so I don't mind if it looks patchy at first because I have tapped off a lot. I'm really just almost doing like a placeholder initially so I know where I'm taking the colour to and getting the kind of shape that I want. So Val, uh, she and I have collabed a number of different times. Um, we both have restful soothing voices and she's actually a nurse so it's just as well she's got a restful voice really um we've done makeup collabs because we both love our bright colors although unfortunately she has been told to tone it down a little bit for work um which is a shame i'm sure it makes all the patients smile um, but we've also done collabs where we've read things so for example there was one of them where we read our favourite poem um, so because we, we have quite restful voices and we're, we're, we're often told that by people so we thought, okay, let's, let's let's just read some stuff that people can play if they're stressed out and need to chill out. I have actually got um, a playlist called Relax. I think it's called Relax and Sleep. Um, one of the first films that I did was uh, a couple of people had written saying that they'd played one of my films when they were having a panic attack. And just hearing my voice 
calmed them and I thought that was just such an amazing thing because I get I get panic attacks I know how debilitate debilitating that they are and how awful they feel when you're experiencing them um, so I actually did one called relax and sleep where I kind of try and talk you through relaxing down and hopefully getting you to get to sleep because a lot of people say they'll put one of my longer tutorials on and say I hope you won't be offended by this but I just put your longer tutorial on and just you know start a playlist and just play it and just go to sleep to it and I'm like do you know what if you find that helpful then crack on you know uh, as long as you're not falling asleep over your cornflakes when you're uh, following a tutorial, then that's absolutely fine. Uh, so yeah, we've 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 collabed on a number of different uh, types of film over the time we've known each other, and it seems that I'm I'm destined to have nurses in my life because. My uh, my stepmom's a nurse, and my mother-in-law's a nurse. <laughs> Valerie's a nurse. <laughs> so yeah, it just seems that um, the caring profession seems to be, you know, playing a big part in my life. And obviously, I was I say obviously, like you know, I was full-time carer to my mum from age 13 to 34 when she finally snapped and tried to kill herself and tried to kill me and that was an interesting Saturday night I tell you anyway that's got nothing to do with Valerie <laughs> um, I just, I really, really love her. I love listening to her films. Um, she's, uh, she's had quite an interesting life recently. She uh, went through a breakup of her long term relationship and then was out in the dating world again. I couldn't do that. She's, she's braver than I am. I've been with my husband now. We'd have been married six years this year, together for eight. So we got married on the two year anniversary of our first date and um, I could not get back into the dating world. Some of the stories that uh, she's told both on and off camera of different things that she uh, experienced um, let's just say I'd be doubly grateful for, for my career, put it that way. Right, I'm just going to clean this brush off on a clean washcloth. I don't like using um, colour switches. I find they're far too harsh on the bristles, especially with natural bristle, bristle brushes. That's quite difficult to say. Um, this is synthetic, but yeah, I, I really don't like the way it, it pulls on the bristles. Right. And we're going to Pacific now, which is the the bluey grey. I really like this colour. This one has got a bit more kick up on it. I'm just going to tap off a bit more. I'm just going to. I do struggle here and here both sides with dry patches, almost like an eczema. And you can see here, I've got super super deep creasing there. Gives me that tiger stripe effect. Unfortunately, that's damage caused from when I was five years old, so 40 years ago when the ophthalmic hospital was pulling my eye around trying to work out why I wasn't seeing properly out of it. Skin on your eyes, folks, is as delicate as tissue paper. Please treat it that delicately. So I'm just blending this on the outer edge and buffing it into the blue it's quite funny the last blue look I did was quite dark as well 
That was a um it was meant to be a palette bingo but I completely forgot it was meant to be a palette bingo and I just just randomly chose the shades I fancied doing. Oops. Thankfully the girls that I was clapping with were very understanding of my fibro fog moment. So But uh Yes, Valerie is, she's one of those women you can just sit and listen to, you know. She's, she's the sort of person you think, yeah, if you were the nurse and you were bringing me bad news, at least I know you'd deliver it in a calming way, you know. Not that anybody wants to get bad news, but, you know, the way that it's delivered can be. Can you see what I mean about, I keep getting like a bare patch here when I'm blending it. That's not the pigment, it's the dry patch because it's the exact part that I know I suffer with. If you get that, do like I've done and get all the edges blended out how you want it. And then once you've got it all blended out, if you've, if you've got a slightly bare patch, pick up the barest little bit of pigment and just tap on the spot and tap around to just cover where it was fading and that will uh, do with that for you. I do like palette bingos, They're, um, they can take you very much out of your comfort zone. Um, I mean this is actually the first time I've, I've used this palette since I bought it and I will admit if I was choosing the colours I most likely would have gone for this sort of area with the teals and the, the light blues and everything. Well, in actuality, I have got the complete opposite. But that's the fun of makeup. And that's the fun of palette bingo. You're never quite sure what colour combination you're going to get. Um, and I don't tend to. I'm not the sort of person that sits down and plans what I'm going to do for a look. I, I sit down, press record on the camera and just see what happens really. I mean sometimes, sometimes it works out really well, other times I have to stop and take the makeup off and restart because what I've done looked horrendous. So far this is still Round one. So, so far, so good. Now what I am doing, I, I just keep sitting back and checking that I've got the shapes about the same both sides because obviously I'm not the sort of person that uses filters and face tune and Photoshop and all that nonsense. What I produce you can produce with patience and practice. Um, the only time I use any kind of filter is if when I'm taking photos it's come over a bit dark and I just need to adjust the brightness so that the colours are true to what you're actually seeing. Um, or if I've taken them, like for example uh, next door I've had builders in for the last sort of week and a half so I've not really been able to film during the day it's now 10 o'clock at night so um, obviously I'm going to be I'm filming under fluorescent light so I've got the camera settings well not fluorescent light but under it's not strip lighting in the kitchen anymore thankfully it's ordinary incandescent bulbs Ellie you know the low energy ones so I've got my camera settings for that so that what you see is actually true to colour because obviously the, sh the bulbs that are above me give a slight yellowy tint but then behind the camera you can probably see them reflected in my eyes. I've got a strip light, double strip light behind the camera that is just pure white LED. So literally all I've done is fiddle with the light balance on the camera to make sure that you're getting something that is 
as close to what I'm actually seeing as possible. Um, I do sometimes put pictures up with Snapchat filters on, but they're very obviously Snapchat filters. And if I do put pictures up with Snapchat filters on, at least the first two or three will be photos of me without any filter on, literally. Um, I don't use skin smoothing filters because I find every single one of my lines and my creases and my, you know, my grey hairs, so all of them have got a story behind them, why should I hide them? Uh, Hubby's down in his man cave at the bottom of the garden at the moment. Probably listening to some kind of wafty folk music. He's going through a wafty folk music stage. I swear my man was originally a hippie from the 60s and he hit a time warp and ended up being reborn in the 80s. Okay, and again I'm just cleaning this brush off because I'm going to use the same brush again to go into the deep blue called Lagoon which I'm going to run on this outer edge here and the outer third of my mobile lid. Quite a few of you have said to me that you've been buying the Crow and Pebble primer that I use all the time and you're saying how well you're getting on with it and that's really great to hear. Um, a couple of you have actually found that one of her skin tone shades is the perfect match for you which is even better. I mean I go for the, the pure white because um, I want the colours to really really pow and show up. Uh, I might at some stage get one that's more towards my skin tone but at the moment I quite like the the white and the, the fact that it then shows the pigment off to the brightest effect possible. You can see I'm just taking this through, sort of taking it to about where the two colours meet and then anything left on the brush just kind of drifting it forward a little bit Um, I've not been able to do a cat's eye for a while. I managed to do one last Saturday with the gel liner. And obviously, um, <clears throat> one of the looks that I did when my lipstick chose my makeup, I managed to do a graphic liner with the gel liner. But my eye has been punishing me ever since, going, you wore graphic liner two days in a row. I'm going to weep and be really annoyed and really angry with you now. You're not going to be able to put any graphic liner on at all. So what I'm doing, I'm putting this deepest colour through the outer crease here and kind of um, winging it up into a triangle. Because what this will do it will give the same effect as a winged liner would. It pulls the the eye up and out. I don't know if you can see the difference that it's made so far. <clears throat> but it just because if anything dark recedes or goes back, anything light comes forward. So obviously, if you've created your own crease, if you've got hooded lids. Yeah, you'd, you'd put this deepest shade through along that part and then from further back it looks as if that part of the eye does actually recede back further but it also gives you the added benefit of being able to sculpt the shape of the eye and, and give that effect of it coming up on the outer edge which just gives a, a, a more youthful elongating effect. Be amazed what you can do with makeup. 
And like I said, if you do a look and don't like it, you can take it off and start again. It's not a tattoo, it's not permanent. This eye, obviously, I can actually shut my eyes so you can see what I'm doing a little bit easier. I do tend to get more fallout this side though, because um, obviously this eye was pulled around a lot more. And uh, therefore, it, it moves around a bit more than I would like. But um, yeah, I bought an awful lot of blue and green palettes last year. I think I'm just about just about satiated now. I am super super tempted by the Melt Moete palette but what I'm gonna do and when I've got a little bit more time because I've got quite a few films that obviously I'm behind with my filming because I haven't been able to film during the day like I would normally do because of the builders next door. Um, once I've caught up with my filming, I'm going to see if I can dupe the Moete palette using shades that I've already got. Uh, this lagoon could absolutely be one of the blues. But I've got a couple of friends of mine that have got the Moete palette and they're going to take um, some really good swatches for me in daylight both finger swatches and brush swatches so that I can really properly see whether I've matched or not because I don't have you know I've only got online swatches to go by and most of them are swatched on people that are darker skinned than me so that doesn't always help um, <clears throat> so yeah, should be good fun. Actually, one of my lovely 4F family, naughty girl, has actually uh, bought me a tarty blenderful and is sending it over. Just because she wanted to find out my opinion of it. I did tell her off for spending her money on me. But she's like, well, I've already bought it now, so... <laughs> I do appreciate it, though. Um, I never expect anything like that at all. And she won't let me pay her back either, which is frustrating. But um, it does make me smile a lot. Thank you. So as soon as they arrive, obviously it's going to be later than most people's um, reviews. But I will be having a review going up of the blender form. I will let you know what I think of it. Including how easy it is to wash. I'm just cleaning this brush out again, trying to get as much of the... powder out as possible. Alright, I'm going to go in and do the lid, the mobile lid. Uh, this is another Jeffrey brush. This is the lip brush, uh, the JS24. But I like it because of the shape of it. You can get right down into that corner. Now obviously Long term viewers will know what I'm about to say. Never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush. So I'm going to pack the pigment onto the brush, spray it with some of this, dry off this ferrule, and then apply it to my lid. So I'm going to go into anemone because I did only have the one um, shimmer shade. which is this rather beautiful green, it has to be said. I'm just packing this on both sides of the brush. As you can see, it's like an old goldy green almost. Uh, 
Um, if you're wondering why I'm using Slay All Day to wet this instead of one of my cheaper sprays, it's because this is the jasmine scent and for some reason the jasmine scent dries my jawline out. None of the other scents do it to me, just that one. So I saved that one for doing this instead. Um, first time I'm using a palette I don't do a cut crease because I want to see exactly how opaque the shimmer shades are. And this appears to be very opaque, which is lovely. It's definitely covering the deeper blues. Now with this eye, I don't have to stretch the lid out. I can just use the, the pressure of the brush to sort of spread the pigment across the lid. And then I'll use the tip of the bristles just to buff where it meets the matte shade on the edge there. Now the problem I have with this eye, I'm just going to dry the brush off before I go back into the pigment and load up again. The problem I have with this eye is that deep creasing. Now I do have to stretch the lid out. I hate doing it. It's something I always tell you not to do. Unfortunately I have found from experience that if I don't do it the pigment will settle loosely into the deep creasing rather than being you know, nicely blended out and then as it dries it ends up falling down into my eye and irritating the eye um, and also falls down onto my face and ruins my makeup look. So, you will see me stretch this lid out, however you will see me only stretch it out as far as I need to let go as soon as I can and then you'll see just how much more this lid moves than this one did as well. And you can really see the tiger striping that I've got there. I'm not overly worried because obviously a lot of it's going to be covered with this shimmer shade. So you can see as soon as I've got that blended, I let go. And I only pull the lid out as far as I absolutely have to. Um, it's. I would much rather not pull the lid out, but if I just do this, like I did before with the other eye, um, I know it leaves me in trouble, unfortunately. This is a really pretty shade. Buff that together at the end there. That's looking really nice. Really nice actually. Right, uh, I'm going to pause you. I'm just cleaning this brush off while I'm talking to you. I'm going to pause you and I'm going to pop some foundation and whatnot on. And I will be back to finish this eye look off with you. Now, for me, I'm going to have to wait until the next time that I press record in order to be able to chat to you beautiful people again. For you, however, there will be no delay. It will be, indeed, instant. So I will see you right now. Hello. I am back. <laughs> Trying that soap brow thing again. I think it's growing on me. I think. Not entirely sure, but I think. Right, I'm going in with this flat top brush. I'm going to go into anemone. Which is the shimmer shade. I'm just going to run that along the lower lash line. I know what you're thinking. You haven't used algae yet. Yes, I know. I haven't forgotten. Wow, it really sounds like it's running again out there. 
At least I know Hoppy's dry in his shed. You know he's actually astroturfed the inside of the damn thing. It's a proper hippie's cave, put it that way. <laughs> it really is. I love him to bits, I really do. But uh, yeah, his man cave is definitely a uh, representation of himself. Right, this is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. Love it. Flat topped but chunky. So it's great for getting up under the bottom lashes. Now I'm going into algae. Just for a pop of bright green along that lower lash line to blend out anemone. Oh, I'm so glad we're not going to have a beer. My uh, cellulitis is not healing up very well. Part of the problems with having Raynaud's disease where partly your hands and feet get absolutely bloody freezing. But another issue with it is that because you've got... The reason your hands and feet get so cold is because you've got poor circulation. So poor circulation also means any leg and arm injuries take forever to heal. So my cellulitis that I had last September, September, October time, I had the two weeks worth of antibiotics and that sort of dried it up and stopped it from weeping. And it sort of scabbed over and bits of it, sound off, bits of it were dropping off. So it was healing. I'm like, okay, that's cool. And then it flared back up again. And started weeping again, so I went back over the GP. More antibiotics, so of course when you're on antibiotics you can't have beer. I really fancied a beer this weekend. Right, I'm going to go into my Jeffrey Northern Lights palette. And I'm going to go into Below Freezing. And just pop a bit of that. Ooh, look at that. Oh, that in inner corner there. That's pretty. If you have more melanin than me, that would look beautiful as a highlight. I mean, I probably would still wear it as a highlight and then just stick some ice cold over the top of it or something. But that's me. Right, wipe the brush off and then I'm going to go into the Alaskan sky here, which I don't know if you can see, it's kind of got like a, like a greeny, pinky shift to it. I don't know if you can actually see that when I put it on there or not, but trust me, it has. up under the toe of the brow. This is just a cheap lip brush that I bought for me by 10 years ago now. I might add a bit of this over that blue actually. Ooh, look at that! Oh yes, hello. That's pretty. That's super pretty. Right, I'm going to pause you for one last time. I'm going to chuck some more of this highlight on my face, put some mascara on, choose a lippy, do something with the hair, and I'll be back with my completed look. I'm back and for once my hair is actually not too mad. So, this my darlings is my finished look with this Ace Beauty Oceanic palette. 
and the shades that I had from the um, palette bingo. Uh, the highlight again was the Alaska Nice one. Hopefully, if I you can now see that it's got that sort of greeny pinky shift to it. Hope you can see that now. I hope so. Uh, mascara is the Revolution Blowout Cannabis Sativa Mascara. I'm really liking this. Even though it's not waterproof, I'm really liking this. Massive brush though, so if you've got tiny eyes, you might struggle. And the lippy, I grabbed out my Fenty Glow, because I haven't worn this for quite a while. So I felt a nice little bit of uh, subtle gloss would complement these, let's face it, what a stunning deep look. And then a slightly more controlled, sleek hairdo. And then I normally have, I must be due, well, I'm due to cut my hair again soon, it's getting a bit long. So there we go. That's what I did with the five shades that I had. Uh, if you are one of my 4F babies, uh, once you've done all those good YouTubery things of liking and commenting and maybe sharing, please double check you're still subscribed. YouTube are still deleting people left, right and centre. It's very frustrating. It's very disheartening. <sighs> I don't want to lose any of you. I love every single one of you. And once you have done all of that, I'm going to need you to pop over to Val's channel. It will be linked along with her film in my description box so that you can go and see exactly which shades she had from this palette and what her look has turned out like. And obviously do all those good youtuber things with her, so like, comment, share, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed to her. Let her know you're from the 4F family and show her the same kind of love that you show me every day in my comment section. If you are here from Val's channel, hi, hello, welcome. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it here. I'm not always this mad, sometimes I'm worse. It's, let's face it, usually I'm worse. And... Uh, as well as being worse, I, I also tend to have a myriad of uh, different headgear that comes out every so often as well. Oh, I quite like this hat with this look. Hmm. But my hair's behaving itself, so let's take the hat back off for now. So yeah, uh, <laughs> if you've enjoyed the madness that is 4F, it would be awesome if you too would like to join the family by hitting that subscribe button and turning it from red to grey, then ringing the bell, choosing all notifications, signing six million different things, saying yes, I want to hear from you when they upload, and then maybe you'll get told every fourth film I upload. Because yes, face it, gone are those halcyon days when we could just like a channel and their films would appear in our news feeds. Right, my darlings, as ever, all... Excuse me one moment, I have a lash. Well, I have many lashes, but I have a loose one. And if I don't deal with it, I'm going to start crying on camera. But I'm, I'm not wearing a grey hoodie. So it's not appropriate. <coughs> right, my darlings, as ever, you'll stay fabulous. <laughs> and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.